Okay, we are live. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Welcome to a very interesting show tonight. Plenty of things I want to get talking about. Potential new managers, potential new signings. And let's get into it, guys. So, of course, as you know, weekends was pretty uneventful Sunday. I don't think anything really of note happened on Sunday. I'm sure you guys will let me know um, if that was the case. Um, but, yeah, look, certainly... A uh, massive win for United of the weekend. Really, really unbelievable scenes at Old Trafford. And I guess that kind of feeds us into the international break now. Unfortunately, probably coming at the wrong kind of time for us because we would want to be building upon the momentum and the good feeling that we do have um, following that unbelievable um, late win against Liverpool. And I guess that does kind of take us into an interesting period now because this is kind of lining things up for the summer, kind of lining things up for the big... Um, the, the big rebuild of a summer we are expecting. I've got Bart in the comments. I uh, hope you've recovered from your cold. I have, but uh, yeah, um, honestly, after Sunday's stream, I was on for about three hours. I felt really good at the time, but like about two hours after that, I had no voice. I've just literally got over whatever um, issue I've had. I Obviously, I had it all last week. It was okay, kind of, at the weekend, and then it came back all over again, but seem to be all good now, we do seem to be all good, so I want to get talking about two things, and that's going to be managers, that's going to be players, because we do know we're going to have a big summer in terms of our spends, in terms of players coming, and in terms of players going, there will be a lot of in and outs of the revolving door of Manchester United. Manager, that also could be an interesting one, you could potentially see a change in management as well at the club, you know, that's something to be aware of, and one of the names at the minute is Gareth Southgate. I mean, I feel like this is just coming out because this is paper talk and it's an international break and we're going to see Southgate in action at the weekend against Brazil. But, I mean, I'm not expecting Gareth Southgate to be our manager. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be the case. I don't think that can be the case. Um, I, I think that might be one of the worst appointments we could genuinely make. And that's not me being an anti-England uh, person. That's not me um, looking manager X, Y, or Z. That's just me looking at Gareth Southgate and thinking this isn't the guy for Manchester United. But get footing on the poll, guys. There's different options down there. I think it's a little bit of a joke story, so I went with a little bit of a joke poll on it, but who knows? So, guys, what are your thoughts about the potential for Gareth Southgate to become Manchester United manager? Are you giddy for Gareth? Are you sickened by Southgate? Are you going to start a Radcliffe out campaign if that is the case? Or would that be the worst possible option for Manchester United? Let me know your thoughts down below. Uh, Bart says, uh, Potter is better than Southgate. Potter is better than Southgate. Potter would be a better England manager than Gareth Southgate and probably get a lot more out of that team, in my, in my opinion, anyway. And I feel like he's kind of in that part of his career now where it would be a good move for him. Uh, Jarl is down there. Southgate would not be hired as a manager. He'd be hired as a coach. The club sets the way United play. Southgate would never send a player. I mean, yeah, but I, uh, Jarl, I still think there's so much more exciting options you could go for than Gareth Southgate. He, it would be the most look warm, uninspiring dull appointment we can make. And I mean, you only have to look at the reaction within our own fan base. We really don't want that. I think a lot of people would rather give Eric Ten Hag more time than if Gareth Southgate, to be honest. Born is down there. I would stop supporting United if uh, Northgate or Potter is, is appointed. Fair enough. Born is coming out here nailing the colours to the mast. But I guess we will get talking about... Um, <clears throat> about some transfers as well, because this is kind of where the interest comes from. This is kind of where, you know, we're, we're starting to get developing stories and we're starting to get um, s some points of interest. Now, let me quickly pull it up in front of me because I want to go through a story that United Muppeteers have put out there and they've kind of put out a short list, kind of like a tier list. We're looking at all the different options who could be potentially coming to Manchester United, who could be options for us, who we could end up going after in this upcoming transfer window. And what they've very well done is, is looked at the suitability, the probability in terms of prices, in terms of our budgets, in terms of what the players rated within the club. Uh, and then they've kind of like tiered them off. So I'm going to go through this because it's an interesting story and there's some really good players on there. Players who do accept me, players maybe we hadn't considered. But I'm going to go through it one by one and we're going to go through uh, and analyse and just have our own thoughts and stuff. On this one as well. Jarl is saying, I thought Ten Hag would last the length of his contract, which expires next season. Could happen. I mean, it, could, it very, very easily could happen. Absolutely, that is um, a distinct possibility that, you know, he does end up um, seeing out the rest of his contract. That's very possible. Um, 
So according to Muppeteers, these are the positions that Manchester United are looking at, and this has been widely reported. It doesn't take a genius to work it out. We already know this. I think you only have to look at this team to see where the issues will come from. So, obviously, the kind of positions we're looking at is left-back, we're looking at centre-back, we're looking at that um, defensive midfield, centre-mid kind of position as well. We're looking at strikers, right wings, and potentially right-backs. Now, we're going to have priorities, obviously, I reckon striker's going to be high up there because Martial will go and we only have one striker. I think there's a good chance centre-back's going to be high up there because Varane hasn't signed a contract. Lindelof is apparently for sale. Johnny Evans might retire. Lissandro Martinez might never be the same player again after all these injuries he's had. And Harry Maguire could still leave as well. Uh, so so you, could, you could be questioning every single one of our centre-backs as well for their long-term suitability. You know, you're looking at Luke Shaw as the only left-back this season and he has been injured a lot, no mistake about it. Um, so, so certainly, look, there's a lot of players I would expect to come in in certain areas. We're going to run through some of these real quick. I'm going to hop to the comments as well, just before um, we j dive in to this. Um, I have Jarl saying Southgate's strength is that he's a morale booster for his players. He's a very good Man management coach, one of the better. You always need to twist your view. Why would they hire the guy? This is why. Potentially. Potentially. I mean, I look at Southgate for pretty negative football, for picking the same players constantly, even though they have no right to be in the team, like um, Calvin Phillips and Jordan Henderson. I don't think Gareth Southgate is, is my option whatsoever. I think that's like the furthest thing from the truth, honestly. Um Part of saying, have I looked at Mario Hermoso? He's a good left-back. Yeah, he can also play centre-back. He's good, uh, Hermoso. Bourne says, any of are worse than the Glazers just being linked with these mediocre managers? I think it's just throwing names out, to be honest, man. I, I, I don't think there's any substance to that Southgate story. I'm just touching upon it for a fun poll question because these transfer links in, in terms of actual players, they're a lot stronger, but there's so many of them, I couldn't just put them into four different options. So we'll look at Southgate for the sake of today's poll, but by no, make, by, but, but by no means do I expect Gareth Southgate to become the next manager of Manchester United. Now I have comments as well. Um, Bart is saying Manu and Garnaccio should not be first choice starters. Um, United risk running them into the ground. They need managed better. I agree. I agree. I, I would like them to be managed better. I think it's a damning indictment of where we are as a team that Garnaccio has played 25 or 26 consecutive matches that Manu has played 15 Premier League matches from the end of November you know that's not that's not the kind of protection these young players need you only have to look at Barcelona to see what overexposure to um excessive matches will do to a young player look at Pedri look at Gavi you know these these are cases for us to learn from us it's the exact same with Wayne Rooney Wayne Rooney was the same uh, he was arguably done by 29-30 years before he should have been and it was because he was overplayed so much as a young player um, and that's kind of it in my opinion uh, Bart says 100% his story has come back now after beat Liverpool United fans not allowed to have good things press will do their best to self-sabotage maybe maybe that's what it is um, I have Jeremy down there. Uh, we already scored less than Luton. Do we really need Southgate? I mean, if we want to get those goals on to net zero, maybe. Uh, Bart says, top youngsters, uh, McPep, Iniesta and Foden all played around um, 16k minutes when they were 24. Uh, Rooney played 25k and was done by 31 managed. Manu and Garnacho better. Absolutely. You all said, Ineos would never name drop who the next manager is. So the uh, son and ESPN lied when they said Ineos had leaked this name to them. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think Ineos will have made a full decision on that in the first place anyway, to be honest. Um, I, I really don't. So I'm going to run through some of these players. That's going to be the main topic of today's discussion. I guess we'll start off with centre-back. I have a video coming out, probably not tomorrow, but Friday, about the importance of overhauling our back line and what it's going to do to our ability to play football and how it's going to be so key to us fixing those massive issues we have this season. But centre-backs are right at the very heart of that, and I think we need two. Muppeteers seem to think so as well, so I'm pretty happy with that there. And the, the players that they have linked, um, the two strong candidates at the moment are Jared Brandwood and Jean-Claire Tobito. So I would expect two centre-backs. Brandwood is a left centre-back, Tobito uh, is a right centre-back, and I think those are two really good options. Uh, Tadebo is very good on the ball. Brandwitt is good on the ball. Maybe doesn't get to showcase it as much due to the system and the constraints of playing at Everton at the minute. Um, obviously, they're not a team that is 
um, playing expansive football. But I think if you go back and look at how Brentford played a PSV before that, I think you'll see a player there very confident and comfortable in possession. Um, so yeah, those those are absolute guarantees, I think, in terms of position. There are other names out there who we could be looking at. For left centre-back, they're looking at Ignacio as well, or to uh, Tepsoba. Marquehi is down there, as is Bastoni. But I think Brankwit's probably going to be the preferred option because one thing I think we'll want to do is raise the physical flooring of this team and bringing in a really quick six foot five, really strong centre-half who can cover those wide areas very efficiently and be a real, real asset in terms of the transition that's going to be absolutely key. And I think uh, Brantford takes a lot of boxes, Premier League proven. Um, and for the £60 million pound that's being talked about, I think that's, it's not that it's a fair deal, but it's probably an acceptable price. I think you would pay that much to bring someone in from the Bundesliga. I think you'd probably pay that much for like a Tapsoba or an Ignacio without the guarantee of them acclimatising to the Premier League. I think Brantwood is a really good option in that regard. Now, on the other hand, I think Tadebo is being linked as number one because that's probably an, an easy deal to get done with Nice. Obviously, the joint ownership, United and Nice, we would still have to pay the quote-unquote fair market price that is part of the uh, multi uh, the multi club um scheme that we would have to pay a fair market valuation of what today bo is going to be so you might see us make that move quickly and initially just in case you do see big moves for a brand with or you see a big move for a, a diamond there or an antonio silva you, you i think it makes sense to go in for that there deal nice and early but those are potential center back options let me know your thoughts on that there one guys we're looking at Tadebo and we're looking at Brantwood. i think we need both i think both are really good options and if you add in lissandra martinez to that maybe you keep hold of johnny evans or harry Maguire or victor lindelof or varan you keep hold of at least one of them i would say i think that's a nice quartet of center bats there you got two starters who are always going to be available in Brandwood and Tadebo. You've got Harry Maguire, potentially, who's usually available. Lissandra Martinez hopefully will be available as well in um, the seasons to come. You've got Camboala there as a fifth option on the bench, and you maybe extend Johnny Evans to be centre-back number six. That is a pretty nice makeup of a back line that gives you that kind of high pressure. It gives you that sort of ability to squeeze up the pitch and be more overall compact, and I think that would be really nice um, in terms of the mix there but let me know your thoughts to that i'll hop back onto the comments see what you guys are saying anyway um <clears throat> uh, let me see uh bart is down there it's in bart's comment you all uh what do i see can't they can't press bart says eric knows ten hag ball better than anyone in the premier league he can legally work um in the uk speaks english leaf uh, fluent, get him a shirt and collar and bring him in as a tea. <laughs> okay, buddy. Uh, Bart said, uh, look at the centre backs that play for Bologna. Antonio Silva is also a great option, but too expensive. Yeah, I mean, I like Antonio Silva. I just think 100 million for Antonio Silva is probably excessive. Um, I'm a big fan of Bologna. I've been watching them all season. I think Xerxes is fantastic, but I genuinely like every time I watch um, Bologna, I'm always kind of surprised by how busy and how much work uh, Lewis Ferguson gets through in the middle of the pitch as well really not a lot of people talking about him uh, Scottish midfielder just tearing it up in Serie A um, I think he is Bologna's captain as well so I mean it's it, it is it is interesting there's some very good players in there Bart says uh, Kevin Danso to Lons is a bargain he might go to Bayern yeah see I think there are other players who I would add in there and um, thankfully Muppeteers have alluded to that two of those are um, of course uh, Kevin Danso but we also have Lena Yoro as well um, I think you, Yoro looks kind of likely for Real Madrid. That could be a potential there, kind of following in Varane's footsteps, being a 19-year-old centre-back going to Real Madrid. Um, so so we'll, we'll see how that one develops. I like Antonio Silva. I just think he's too expensive, to be honest. Um, Jeremy's down there. I like both um, defenders concerned about Brantwood's pace. I, I have no concerns. I think he's very quick. I, I think he's very, very good in those wide areas. And that's that's exactly what we need. We don't really have defenders comfortable of carrying and um protecting those wide areas so i think yeah i think i think someone like brandwick would be a, very important for that there i like today Bo as well i think maybe there's better options out there but if you're looking to center backs i guess one of them is going to have to be on the cheaper side and i think today Bo, you probably get that deal done for about 35 million i think that 35 40 million maybe that would be fair enough there Possibly you end up loaning a couple of young players out uh, to Nice as well uh, to sweeten the deal um, on that end. Um, 
Yeah, Bart's not too worried. He's uh, <laughs> about the price of a player. Yeah, look, I mean, it's one of those. I know it doesn't come out of my pocket directly, but I'm looking at it that we have an overall budget. We're not... In terms of selling, we don't have a good track record, but we also don't have a lot of top-level sellable assets, in my own opinion, as well. So I think that's going to be something we address, um, hopefully in the coming years. Um, but I think we will be working from a set budget. So look, I think centre-backs, you're looking to centre-backs, right? A right centre-back and a left centre-back as well. I think that's absolutely key. And then, as Jeremy correctly says, midfield is then another top priority. The four real top-level priorities are at the attacking um, output. We're looking at a midfield and we're looking at two centre-backs. That seems to be the four main targets, the non-negotiables, so to speak. So in terms of centre mids, defensive mids that we're looking at, we know two of them. We know Amadou Onana is up there. Now, do we get, can you get both Onana and Brandwit out of Everton? Probably not. I don't know if you can do both deals unless Everton were to face another points deduction and potentially get relegated or find themselves in a position where Wolves were in last year where they have to sell. Obviously, they've got that new stadium coming up. Relegation would be an absolute uh, economic disaster for Everton. Um, if they did drop down, obviously, they still talk about their takeover as well. I think that's still yet to be ratified. So Everton are in a pretty precarious position. Can we capitalise? Maybe. I, I don't know if we get both. I think if we get one player out of Everton, it, it, it should be Brandwit, to be honest. Um, but yeah, look, two, two, of those, two of those midfielders we're looking at, Onana and uh, Martin Hjolmund. Hjolmund is an interesting player um, for Sporting Lisbon. There was talk about us being interested in the January transfer window, and I've watched quite a bit of him. I, 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 I like what I see. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm not as familiar with... Uh, Hjolmund as I would be with um, <clears throat> Unana, for instance, but certainly looks promising, certainly does look like a good player in there. Um, I, I th I'm like 99.9% .9 sure he's Danish as well, so you know, that would kind of build upon a Danish link that we've already got. Uh, Bar says that Scandinavian that plays for sporting is really good. Yeah, Morten Hjolmund, really good off the ball, physical, can play simple passes. I think that's what we'll be looking for. I think we're looking for someone with work rate who will win a lot of tackles in the middle of the pitch, can receive as well and be tidy in possession. But I think we're looking to raise the physical flooring off the midfield. And I think Hjolman could be an option. I think him alongside Mani would be nice. And then you put Bruno alongside that. You've got a nice balanced midfield there. Um, but other players who are interested, and in, I'll read out some of them, I don't think they're all going to be as likely. Um, Ezekiel Palacios, having a very good season for Bayer Leverkusen. Obviously, there's been historic um, injury concerns there with Palacios, but he, he I think he's managed to stay pretty much injury-free this season. Um, obviously, we at uh, Chiram from Nice. That's another one we're being talked about. But I think it's interesting because I watched him a few times this season for Nice. Uh, he doesn't seem to be as explosive. I think he had an injury that seems to have limited that. I'm not... Again, don't quote me on it, but that does seem to be an issue there. Uh, a player who I'm quite fond of as well, um, Fafana from Monaco. Yeah, I mean, I like him. I, I've He's got a really good goal in the last international break for France. Um, he gets around. He will put a lot of tackles in. Uh, Bartosang uh, Kaida from Royal Antwerp is a good option too. I haven't seen Kaida um, from there, to be honest, buddy. Another player who I do like, though, is uh, Zubamendi from um, Real Sociedad. He is down on the list, seemingly, but he's not too high up on it as well. And then we got Hackney. I think it's, I think it's Hayden Hackney, potentially, of um, Middlesbrough. I'm, I'm, 19, I'm almost positive he plays for uh, Middlesbrough. I guess there are a lot of work in there. Uh, 21 years old as well. I mean, he's kind of at the age, he's kind of at the profile where maybe he could be another move, an extra move in that midfield area. I don't think Hayden Hackney would be the only player we would bring in, um, potentially, but you know, Mid Middlesbrough are looking very much set on for another season in the Championship. If you wanted Hackney, you probably could get him out of there, to be fair. Um, but yeah, he's, he, he's a busy player, um, has been good for Michael Carrick's team um, across this season as well. 
and, and he he could be another option. He, he could be another option. I, I'm not saying by any means Hayden Hackney is going to be the the number one by what everyone is saying online and what the um, online sources do seem to be reporting. But certainly a player to keep an eye out on. Only 21 years old. At that kind of age, coming from the championship, you know, there 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 is a track record of stepping up from the championship or on that kind of age and stage in the development. Um part is down there, yes, you can't get rid of many English players in the first team already as a problem with a quota. And if Tomlin should be cashed on, same goes for Sancho, Maguire and Greenwood. Yeah, I mean I think Greenwood will be cashed in on. I, I think that's fairly obvious. I'm not too sure about McTominay. I, I think you could make that case. If a big offer came in, you could move him on. And I think he's definitely um, raised his profile again this season. And he, you were probably looking right now at a £40 million player. I mean, the goals he has scored and what he could add to a team really would add value to him as a sellable asset. I think Sancho's pretty nailed on. It depends if Dortmund want him back. I think that's going to be the key here. I think that's the easiest deal to do if we can sell that at all but I guess we're just going to wait and find out and that Harry Maguire is an interesting one because we're still paying Maguire off Maguire is still going to be um, a burden on the FFP um, it's actually cheaper in terms of our transfer budget and financials to re-sign Raphael Varane than it is to keep Harry Maguire for another season um, <clears throat> so, so, so that's a point of interest but I, I can see us I think we'll be okay for English players with Manu now and Rashford still going to be here. Uh, Luke Shaw still going to be here. Wan Bissaka presumably will still be here. But I think you know there's a case maybe for him to be moved on at some point. You've got Mount as well. Um, so I think the homegrown players probably going to be okay. But something you do want to keep an eye out on anyway. Um, look, other players we're looking at. We know we're looking at right wingers. We know Mike Lolisa is top of that list. That's been a a. a, a a public secret for a very long time but that, that's very very much um a potential signing there he's on the thumbnail for a reason i think that's one that we really could be looking at i mean i like elisa i've done i've actually got a video recorded on elisa i haven't i uh, got around to editing it but i will get uh, i will get that done at some point um and get and get it up because i think elisa is kind of what we need in the attack now, watching United at the moment, you would have watched back on Sunday, we, we've got a lot of players who are very good in transition, very good um, and direct in terms of what they do on the ball. You're looking at Garnacho, you're looking at Rashford, you're looking at Hoyland. Uh, I mean, Elise can do it, make no mistake about it. He is quick, he is direct, and he's very good uh, when he gets his head down and runs the people, but he brings a lot more to the table. He brings an element of composure, a willingness to keep the ball in the final third, a willingness to help us sustain attacks, which I think is something we miss in terms of a profile. Like, don't get me wrong, I like Pet, uh, Pedro Neto, but I don't think he's going to add as much variety to our attack as what Elise would do. Big ups to Steph down there. Other players we are looking at, seemingly Nico Williams, who I'm a big fan of as well. And then I think Antonio Nusa is another potential one. Um, now, Bourne is down there raising a very good point, and it's a subject I'm going to move on to now as well. I'll come back to the transfer stuff and the players that we are looking at in just a moment as well. But we, we, will, we will get talking about this because it's an interesting one. So Christian Eriksen dropped an interview, I think it's with um, Danish TV or something, um, pretty much he's not happy about the level of playing time he's getting. I think I think it's an interesting one because on one hand, it's, you look at the player's point of view. Christian Eriksen had a major health scare and is exceptionally look, lucky to be able to still play football. Um, he's probably lucky to have his health as it is. Um, from his point of view, he's probably looking at it more like a sense of, right, okay, you know, I, I've got a second chance here. I don't want to sit and blow that sitting on the bench here being third or fourth option at Manchester United, which is fair enough. But obviously, look, he made that step up initially. I think the team has gone beyond the needs of Christian Eriksen. I think he's a nice option to have. I think he comes on and brings a calmness and composure and quality in the ball that maybe other players in the midfield don't have at this moment in time. But I, I don't think Christian Eriksen is a long-term starter for us. I think it's a short-term deal. I think it was a short-term deal when we did it last season. And you've got a player now who does look physically incapable of playing a full 90 minutes at the tempo and with the um, amount of intensity like you do see at United. So whether or not Eriksen's a player who's going to be stuck around, I don't know. Rajat said uh, Neto is more like CR7 um, than Mo. Uh, don't even 
Michael, I think we do need Elisa. I absolutely think we need Elisa. I don't think we need Pedro Neto. He, Pedro Neto, I think four or five seasons in a row, hasn't played more than 20 matches in the league. And, and that's a, an exceptionally high amount of injuries for a young player. It's, it does look to be a case that his explosive style of play can give him a lot of um, injury concerns, especially in the Rondo's hamstrings. Now, make no mistake about it. Uh, make no mistake about it. Elise isn't perfect with the injury record either, but I think Elise comes from being overplayed at Palace and not being allowed to fully recuperate and being thrown back into the team out of necessity um, rather than giving him the opportunity to fully heal because the same thing's happening with Eze. The same thing happened with Wilfred Zaha there as well, so I'm not as concerned. I think Kona from Gladbach's a good player. Elisa's trap now is not. Elisa's, Elisa's really good. Uh, big ups to Miola as well. Um, Grisha watching from South Africa. Thanks very much, buddy. Much appreciated. Uh, really do appreciate it. Obviously, it's a small, it's a small little channel, but we got people all over watching. It's really, it's really cool. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, who wants to move on and talk about strikers? And who wants to look at another man on the thumbnail? For anyone who doesn't know, it's a guy we were linked to at one point in time. It is Benjamin Sesco. Now Sesco. We wanted him initially when he was at um, Rebel Salzburg. We were in and around there. I think it was possibly the uh, season we ended up with Igalo in the January transfer window. Don't quote me on it, though. I'm not 100% sure um, on, on that there one. But we were floating in the run there. I think Ollie was the manager at the time. Um, and, you know, they agreed or had a real sense of interest uh, for Benjamin Sesco at one point in time. Um, he snubbed the move um, to Manchester United and he joined um, Red Bull Salzburg. Nobody was surprised about that. I, 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 don't, think, I, don't, I don't think we were ever really um, going to get him over Leipzig whenever they wanted him. It's the same group. It's the same agency. Obviously, that's an easier deal for to do and that's going to go down as 100% profits. But we could be back in for Sesco. I, I quite like Sesco. Um, Mayola says thoughts on Onana from Everton and uh, we need steel and grit in the middle of the park next to Copa yes we do I was saying the same thing earlier I think we will sign one Everton player this um, summer and I think it's either going to be Onana or it's going to be Jared Brantwit I, I think both are really good options I think I would go with Brantwit personally because I think we don't get both in and I think Brantwit's overall profile is probably best suited to what we need obviously in that they're in the middle of the park, we struggle. I think we do need grit and everything. Still, we need someone to win a lot of tackles, be physical, raise the physical flooring. But I think as much as we need that, we need to fix that back line because that's the reason we have these massive spaces and we're always so exposed. I think getting centre-backs like Tadebo on Brandwood and potentially even a left-back will help to solve those issues because your back line can play higher up. That means that you're not going to have the same level of space. I still think we need um a big... um a big overhaul in midfield, and I do think Unano will be a really good shot. I just don't know if we get both. I think Kjolman's a very good option from Sporting if we do go down that route of getting Brandwit, and then we go Kjolman. But if we don't get Brandwit, I'd be more than happy to have Amadou Unano in there. I think he's really, really good. Underrated as well in terms of his on-ball quality. He doesn't get talked about enough. Uh, Rizad is down there. Maybe crap. Um, was not it. He's technically very good. Um, want ringers for pace. Yeah, I mean, you do want to have an element of pace on there as well, but I don't make no mistake about it. Same as down there, under 18 smash uh, Blackburn 5 2, and the under 21 smash West Brom 3 0. Someone I know played in both games. I mean, yeah, I'm I've been very impressed with the academy this year. Um, Sim, I really have, buddy. I think I think under 18s are doing so so well uh, this season. 21s, I know it's not been as easy for them, obviously. It's 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 been interesting because the last couple of um players making the kind of step up, a lot of them have gone directly from under 18s to the first team. You're looking at Manu there, but there has been others. And, and there is a lot of um Academy lads who would be in the around the first team as well. So it it's an interesting one as well, because you do want to have the experience of the, of them playing with each other, but maybe there is more to be said of getting first team experience as opposed to playing in Academy. I think I think that's you know where the most amount of um improvements going to be, but I'm excited for the academy. Got a lot of top top young players coming out of there very very soon, and I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to get on as well. Rosato's on there anyway. Neto's preferred spot is probably left wing. I mean, yeah, look, I like Neto. I just think he's too injury prone, and I think that we need someone different in the forward line. I think Elise gives us something 
that we don't have because look, Garnacho is incredible, Rashford is incredible, Hoyland obviously incredible. But the, it, there's nobody among those players who want to keep a hold of the ball. Even Bruno Fernandez is saying Bruno with those players, they don't want to keep the ball in the final third. They don't want to recycle possession in there and they don't want to have sustained pressure up there. It's not their style of play. They, they go for that all or nothing pass. You know, if it doesn't work out, it's going to go out for a goal kick. It's going to go out for a throw in or they'll give the ball away. Alisa will look up. He'll maybe drop a shoulder, work his bit of space, try play a one, two or something. That's a different profile that adds to what we got. And I think that's good because you don't just want to have all your players be too similar. I think I think you do want to have some some kind of variety in there. I think the best teams have it. I think even if you look at City, I mean, what Foden is very different to what, how Doku plays. And then obviously Haaland in the middle. They're all different profiles, but they add up nicely. Uh, Ronnie is down there. My uh, Liverpool made some Facebook when, <laughs> on Sunday off and they're just coming back on now. Yeah, buddy, Sunday was Sunday, honestly. Absolutely incredible. Um, but guys, tell you what, we'll talk more about strikers. Um, another player we're linked to um, is Brian Brobby. I mean, this has been an ongoing story for a long time. It always feels like a Ten Hag signing because Ajax player, SEG agency, you're like, yeah, this is like a Ten Hag push signing. I think Brobby's improved this year for Ajax. I, I think he's a good player. I don't know if he's going to be the answer or what we need, but I mean, to me, I think we need a number two striker. I think Hoyland's going to be the guy uh, starting every week next year. Guys, big ups and 20 likes as well. Much appreciated. But I think Hoyland is ready to take that step. I think we need a backup, whether that's a more experienced option who can do what Hoyland can't do or whether that's another younger option who can push him and challenge him. I'm not too sure. There'll be different options down there. We do need different different options. Rajat says we need different bench options. So uh, probably could be one. Other players we're looking at, I mean, Ivan Tony will be up there, make no mistake about it, but for Ivan Tony, you're talking £100 million. Pounds. I personally don't like how he's conducting himself in the media at the minute, doing interviews, talking about leaving Brentford and how much he wants to play for Real Madrid and stuff. I mean, I just think that's kind of unbelievable, to be honest. Um, other players, uh, Jonathan David, probably going to be up there. I would assume uh, Petkovic will be up there. I hope Josh Xerxes up there. I think Xerxes is fantastic, and I think as a young option... With Hoyland, you've got two really good uh, complementary players there as well. Xerxes has been really good for Bologna this season. Well worth a watch as well. Whereas that said, uh, Ben Sesco, don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I don't think he set the world ablaze at Leipzig. Um, I could see him making the move. I don't know if it's going to be the one we go with, but it could, it could be an interesting one. We've had the interest before, so it would be a case of looking backwards, maybe to look forwards. I don't know. Ed Barrett, I hope Enios want versatility in the players, um, the more out-and-out -out specialist, the short type two position minimum is the way forward. Thank you, Ed, for the comment. I agree with that. I, I like that as well. I don't think you just want players that need to have the perfect environment. Not that you want a team of of uh, Daily Blinds or Phil Neville's, you know, players who will just play like in every single possible position. But I think you would want some kind of specialist. I think we might go for a centre-back who can also fill in in fullback, and I think that's what Jared Brantwick could be. I think he can't. He, he's played left back for Everton this season. He's done it before. Um, Malaya says uh, probably does not improve us in any way. Stray away from such purchases. He wouldn't be my first choice. He wouldn't. Uh, Rajat said um, we won't get Xerxes. He's up along you from Bayern. I think it's a permanent move, buddy. I'm almost positive it's a permanent move. Um, I'm 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 always positive that he is. Um, th that he left them permanently. I know it didn't work out for him at Bar Munich. I think it actually turned out to be a pretty um, a pretty underwhelming move. Anyway, yeah, yeah, he's he's gone. He he has actually signed full time for Bologna. Um, there, look, there's talk about him being um a target of SC Milan, they might be looking at Giroud replacement, you have to think at some point he's a Bayern product, yeah yeah, I mean I like, I really do like um, Xerxes, I think it, it might be worth looking at Matthias Tell as well I, I think he's had issues with Trickle this season and they've been looking at game time and stuff, whether or not the new Bayern manager whoever comes in will decide Tell to guy to build around long term, I don't know, he's got a very difficult job there very difficult job to try come in and get sufficient game time playing as a, as 
playing as a striker really for Bayern uh, with Harry Kane there. Obviously, a lot of competition in the wide areas. You know, you got Sane, you got Nabry still there as well. Uh, Kingsley Coman, I think, still at Bayern Munich as well. Uh, Rajat said, oh, I guess we're doing that accommodating tell. Yeah, yeah, they, that's what they were doing. But, I mean, tell hasn't really been accommodated either. That's the thing. So who knows what could happen in that front. Anyway, guys, some other players we're looking at. We're going to look at the fullback areas as well. Now, this is all coming from Repeteers, but it's kind of a collection of data and stories and reports from around um, the media in the last couple of weeks. Um, I think that's how it's been framed here. So right back and left back. I think we do need a left back. Because I think there's massive question marks about Malassia. Been out for oh, almost a year at this point. Will he ever come back to play? We don't know. Like he's not, he's not training. He's he's had two surgeries trying to fix whatever problem he's had. And um, the others down there, Delit is someone we need to look into. I like Delit. I I just don't know if we're going to make that kind of deal. I think he would probably be too expensive in terms of his injury record. But certainly, one time a really good option. Simmons down there. Uh, what a game! Then the press want to put a shower down and linking us to <laughs> Southgate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, guys, keep putting on that poll anyway. I've made it to be a little bit of a funny poll because I think it might be. It, it's just a joke. Uh, somehow, fifteen percent of people are saying they're giddy for Gareth Southgate. I don't know. Gareth Southgate would not be getting me off my seat with his style of football. But guys, we'll talk right back, we'll talk left back, which is interesting because obviously in last year we don't know what's happening there. Alvaro Fernandez has gone to Benfica. He hasn't really played there. Question marks about him at the moment. Luke Shaw's always had those injury problems and they do seem to have resurfaced. So I think a left back could be looked at. Ait Nuri from Wolves could be an interesting one playing mostly as a fullback, um, as as a wing back in a like three at the back type system, but I mean, I'd never even played um, attack in midfield for them at the weekend at a point against Coventry, certainly a player uh, with a lot of ability. And I, I think he's only 21 as well. So, I mean, there's, that could be a good option. Um, I, I do think there's injury concerns with him. However, uh, another one who we could be interested in is Balde from uh, Barcelona. You could then be looking more injury problems with him, but there is the talk, of course, Barcelona potentially looking Mason Greenwood. Could a deal be done there? A bold uh, swap? I don't know if that could be an option. Uh, Bart says Van Dijk is better than De Ligt. Yeah, he is. I mean, that's that's pretty obvious. Like, that's like saying... <laughs> that, that's, that, that's like going out there and saying Mohamed Salah is better than uh, Ryan Fraser. Like, it's it's not a comparison. And that's no no disrespect. No disrespect to De Ligt, But, I mean, Van Dijk's just leagues above him. Um. Anyway, left back. So, bold... Uh, I Nuri, I don't know if those are the possible options. Uh, Gutierrez could be an interesting one from Girona. I really like how he's been playing this season. I've watched him a few times. A lot of rotations, and I know you guys will be watching. You certainly seen Dallo a lot this season, coming inside, coming into midfield, popping up everywhere. Gutierrez kind of does the same thing, but as a left back, maybe even uh, to a higher degree as well, with more rotations in that team. He's with Girona. Now, Girona are part of the City Football Group. But we got Omar Barada out of the City Football Group to come be our CEO. Could a deal be done there? Could we still have connections there to try and make a deal uh, for Gutierrez? Potentially, that could be something to look at. Right back's an interesting one because I do think we could have a right back, but I think that's depending on whether Wambasaka goes or not. I might make a flow board for this as well, you know, because there's a lot of contingencies and stuff in here. I'm by no means saying that we're going to go out there and sign a right back. Regardless of what happens, I think we have to sell Juan Bissaka if we want to get a right back. Whether we should do that in the first place is a different one altogether, of course. Born is down there. Frimpong and Datlo could be an interesting competition. Frimpong is down on the list here. Uh, so is Walker Peters of Southampton. Uh, Denzel Dumfries as well. And uh, Wrench from, of course, uh, Ajax as well. So plenty, plenty of interesting players on there anyway. Uh, Bart says Ignacio suits that profile. Yeah, Ignacio can play left back and centre back. That could be an option. Steph says if Malasia ever reemerges, wherever he is, is he Ten Hag's first choice left back if Shaw is sold? I mean, I'm not too sure, Steph. I'm really not. I think Malasia came in and did really well at the beginning of last season. He kind of tailored off and Shaw came back into the team. From then, we didn't really see Malasia play on a regular basis. Obviously, he played when Luke Shaw played centre back last season, but I can't. I just can't see um, Malasia coming back and being first choice at the moment because I think you have to look at it as well. You know, poor, the poor guy's been out for for almost a year from playing football. Like, there's no guarantee of what he's going to come back to. 
Um, but ho hopefully he can make a full recovery and be all good. Um, let me see. Maloya says news on Lenny Euro. I really like Lenny Euro. I'll put that out there. But it's my opinion. It's 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 my opinion that he does look to be Real Madrid bound, and that's unfortunate because I really like him. I think he could be a really good option for us. Um, it it kind of feels like when Varane went uh, to Real Madrid, maybe like ten years or so ago. It it kind of feels like that. There's so like the, you know this guy could be the next big thing in terms of center half signings. And we might lose out on him to Real Madrid, where if he's a success, he could be there for the best part of his career. Um, so it could be important that we go for someone like Euro. I don't think we're going to get him. I think that could be the deal that he goes there and we end up with uh, Tadebo. I think that's more realistic, but I would I would be all for it, honestly. Um, Rajat, if Fernandez comes back um, and gets good, we might not need a new left back. I have concerns about Fernandez's quality. I think he's a good player, but I think Amas is better at United. And then... Benfica, who are notorious for buying um, young, talented players on the cheap and flipping them on, they haven't really been interested in Fernandez once they've got hold of him. So I'm not too sure. Um, Rizad said Lenny is going to Madrid. Bart says um, Frimpong is a former City Academy a graduate to have a clause. I don't know if he'll have a clause because this would be his second permanent move. Obviously, I think he went to uh, Celtic first, so I would assume City's clause would have kicked in at that point. I don't know if they would have had a clause um, after the Celtic signing. I feel like if anyone would have a clause, it'd probably be Celtic. Um, Luman, is nationalism going to be part of Radcliffe's agenda when it comes to players, managers and staff? I doubt it. I think it's if it's going to be best in class, then it's going to be best in class. I mean, our CEO is Spanish, like... So, yeah, I, I, I don't think nationalism is going to come into it, buddy. Don't worry. Don't worry too much about that there one. Um, let me see. Rajat, uh, oh, where's Gutierrez playing? Gutierrez is a left back for Girona. Um, Girona's doing really well in La Liga this year. I think their title charge has kind of fallen away. I think just a small squad, really. But but for a long period of time, you know, they were right up there, even leading the league for a, a good chunk of the season as well. They, they might still finish top four in uh, La Liga. They could still get Champions League, I think. So, so that could be something interesting, um, how that will come come to be in terms of the ownership model, because obviously we've seen a lot of stories about United and Nice being in the Champions League at the same time. Let's see if City are going to rack up a 116th charge. Who knows? Um, anything is possible, of course. Now, I have more good comments coming in. I can see from you guys. Um... Who have I got? Rajat, can we be more socialist with the board level? <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> I don't know, buddy. Uh, Leman says Bart, he answered it. Um, how, would, how would I know it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what Radcliffe's agenda is. I, I can only look at it from, you know, what I can see. And we're bringing in Ashworth, who's English. We're bringing in Jason Wilcox, who's English. We brought in um, O'Driscoll for the medical department. Um... I, th I I think I think it's I think it's I think it's O'Driscoll. I'm not too sure. Um, and I'm fairly confident he's Irish. Like I'm pretty sure he's um <laughs> something to Brian O'Driscoll. Um, and then Varad is going to be Spanish. So yeah, I mean it's kind of coming from all over the show. It is. Uh, big ups to uh Chat Sport as well. Good to see you, buddy. Rajat said Real Madrid don't own him. Who am I talking about? Um. <laughs> Bart's on there. Bart is on there reminding us that we can't own people. Thank you, Bart. Much appreciated. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, some some players are practically held hostage. Like you do get the odd crazy stories on there. Um, I, I've I've got a party of Carl Frock, uh, Frock down there as well. Um, United, United sound literally at two p.m. has spoken all this. Yeah, I mean that's okay. But I, I mean, I was job so i mean that's what i was doing i haven't really spoke all this as well because i think some of the stories they didn't cover on their show but if they did they did it is what it is um anyway Rizad is down there part of growth that uh let's give verts i mean yeah i, I i'm a massive fan of florian verts I, i've loved i've loved watching that Bayer leverkusen team this season i think verts the way he's come back from his injury really really good and yeah i mean what a player can do a lot of things as well will be interesting to see how he features for the German national team at the Euros. Will he be playing through the middle? Will he be on the right-hand side? You know, that's a pretty stacked Germany team again. Um, so, so that'll be an interesting one. Um, what Bart said, were they all standing while reporting this stuff? And were all the reporters united? 
<laughs> Art just loves a troll, honestly. Honestly. Um, but yeah, um, <clears throat> much appreciated, um, everyone, for hopping on so far tonight. Guys, I think I, I'm going to be on the agenda tonight as well at 9 p.m. If anyone does fancy joining in there as well, um, make sure to hop on over. I, th I think the guys are going live. Let me just double check. Um, if Leverkusen wins the league, Bayern will buy half their squad and their manager. You know, that, that is a, that is an absolute valid point there as well. Bayern Munich have had the mo have had that model because kind of what we did. Uh, United that is under under the Fergie years you know, where we would buy the best players in the league as well. Uh, it it has the effect of weakening your opponents, but it also strengthens you at the same time. It makes a lot of sense in that in that regard. I just don't know. Uh, Bart is a nationalist. I don't know what Bart's political opinions are to be honest I, i'm not even 100 percent sure where bart's from I, I think he said something about um speaking um german the other day but i don't think he's german um Rajat said uh don't run with red on good gutierrez have an eight million bike then they might do yes chess board can be an agenda of uh, carlos under apologies rather be on you an up and coming fan channel no guys it, it's much appreciated i'm not I, I don't take anything bad at all like um because it's not it's not really that serious anyway it's just always um <clears throat> nothing is ever really that serious like I, I go live when i can so it's good it's good it's good to be with you guys anyway um what was i saying um no no but yeah like th thanks for hopping on in here anyway honestly every comment really do appreciate it um yeah the man united agenda uh chat sport and steph and bart um Mol I'm very well with names as well. Moila says, uh, what's my thoughts on Ten Hag in terms of his management and playing style? I think we've seen the best of him. No, we haven't seen the best of him. I've always had the opinion that Ten Hag has not got his style of play across to these players. And I think when I, the more I look at it, the more I think about it, he's personally not playing his style of play because of the personnel at his disposal. So that kind of does cloud the area. Is this a tactical problem or is this a personnel problem i think it's a tactical problem because it's how ten hag setting us up but it's because of the personnel that he's doing that so it would be one of those would we see the proper ten hag style of football that makes a lot of sense if we had the right personnel question questionably maybe i'm not too sure but in my own opinion as well you know we are committing sacrilege against uh Footballing 101, you know, the, the the need for compactness, the need to cover your transitions, the need to um, be strong in terms of your defensive stuff as well. Because, you know, everyone in football at the minute is kind of playing like a 3-2. That's a rest defense. So they're, they're keeping four, usually five players back in that kind of rest defense, ready there to stop a, a transition. We're playing a 2-1. We're throwing seven players forward as as and when we can and yeah it can work like it did at the weekend against liverpool but the, i mean make no mistake about it that's not going to be a sustainable way of playing football as entertaining and as brilliant as what that was it's not quite uh sustainable enough as well and i think that's key you know you want control you want it to be sustainable you want it to be repeatable ideally you can win a match by doing and applying the same principles we can we got the same patterns, the same styles, the same rotations, the same coverage, the same tactics. That's that's kind of what you want to see. You know, that's that's kind of a hallmark of a good team. Is like you can do that there. Winning four three isn't sustainable. As, as incredible as what it was, and as incredibly emotional as what it was, it's it's one of those. It's like we if if we try that again when Liverpool come in the in a couple of weeks time to Old Trafford in the league. We probably lose that match playing that way as well. It's one of those ones, anyway. Um, Farless on there. Uh, keep it up, buddy. Yeah, much appreciated. And uh, Luman said, "I've talked to Alice do a collab stream with you. Who are we talking? Are we talking Alice talk football? Is it? Um, I'm not too. Sh yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind doing. A I do a collab with anybody. Like, I really don't mind too much. Farless on there. I'm from Liverpool, currently studying in Germany. There we go. Thanks, Bart. Much appreciated, buddy. Um, Stephen." How are we signing anyone until we have a sporting director? Pointless. I wouldn't be surprised if Murdo will be doing the business this summer. We've got Ashworth. Like, that deal is done. Even if he isn't officially going to be working for us, they'll be talking to him on the phone. They'll be taking recommendations. They'll be taking his opinion and stuff as well. We'll have... We do have a very good scouting network at United. The problem we've had is that the scouting network and people involved in that side of transfers haven't actually had an official say on anyone who gets sold, how much we pay for them, etc. So that's that's kind of a frustration. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Steph, do you think our channel has been affected by shadow banning from YouTube? Um, 
yes and no. I've always suspected that that was the case. Like, the analytics don't quite add up. Um, no, look, I know there's no official shadow banning for thing. Um, I, I, I think I need to freshen it up as well anyway. I think that's something I do want to do. And uh, maybe this international break, I can brainstorm some ideas to get some fresh content out there as well. Obviously, while well, still keeping the live stuff, but bringing some, some different um, content as well for everyone to enjoy. I think if I can up the number of uploads and content and streams a week, that will help us. But I mean, some of it doesn't add up either. It's like we've got 200 views from 100, sorry, from 200 views from 1,000 impressions, right? So that could be a 20% uh, view to impression rate. Now, an impression is when someone sees the video, they can click on it or they can't click on it. So that's 20%. But YouTube have it done at the minute as 5%. But that doesn't add up because uh, 200 is not 5% of 1,000. Uh, so, so, so that that's kind of the case. That that can impact this as well and the raw numbers but it is what it is there's nothing we can do about that everybody's got that as well i was doing like some general viewing as well um of, of the numbers like even over the last two or three months united stands down like 30 percent in their viewership so it is kind of a lull time it'll pick up in summer it always does it's transfer window everyone loves transfers um but it is what it is um cheers for that there says chat sport um let me see rajat says uh, can we see our style of play with Malasia, Luke Shaw, Martinez? No, no, we can't. Uh, if, even when we bring those players back, we can't see the proper style of play because we're still not able to do what we need to do. You know, that midfield is far too too open and it's been the same as that for match day one. From against Wolves, I remember doing a watch along, sitting with you guys saying we're so open in midfield, they're just countering on us. Where's, where's this space coming from? But we never actually took steps to fix that and until we do i, I don't think we're it, does, it matters who plays you know we're kind of playing mbs style football it, it's up and down the pitch it's exciting but it's maybe not a recipe to win every match i don't know uh, lucky singh wants this, the players to raise the level yeah absolutely uh liman says rajat doesn't want us to win the fa cup i think everyone wants to win the fa cup uh rajat um playing center back too chaotic to play maybe uh let me see. Uh, Southgate is down there. Southgate and Eric. Sorry, Lucky says Southgate and Eric uh, do not listen. Uh, working with young players. Good. Yeah, I don't want to see Southgate, but I don't worry. Uh, Maloto says KKK. Sorry, KK or of Shak. Is it Shaktar? Is it? I, I, I don't I'm not quite sure who it is. Was that in their Holy God level? Am I missing something? But guys. Who are we talking about? Coley? Let me... I'm going to have to look. Oh, man, the Tata said that. Sorry. Uh, let me see. Are we talking cricket? Are you guys talking about Virat Coley? <laughs> Who are we talking about? Um, Bart down there, you and the... Bart in the red level. But, no, but anybody can hop on here. It It's not... Um, it, is, it is about United, but it's not... We don't exclude. Are we talking cricket or uh, what are we talking about here? Um, I'm out of his main devil. Oh, you're talking about cricket. I thought it was. I thought it was. I was going to say like I'm not a fan. I I don't watch cricket. Like, um, I I thought I thought I don't know. I I just had to Google. I thought like you were talking about. You said Shakir. I'm like, is this Shakhtar Donetsk? <laughs> I was sitting going like, I was sitting pulling up the the Shakhtar Donetsk squad list to see who you guys were talking about. <laughs> Hey guys, big ups on 28 likes as well. Let's see if we can make a push to get 30. It's been a while since we got 30 likes in the stream. Let's see if we can get up to uh, 30. I'll have a quick check for something else I want to go through here anyway. Um, I guess we can talk about Kobe Mani making the England squad. I think it's kind of funny. He went and had one training session with the under-21s, and they're just saying, yeah, okay, let's get this guy into the senior team. Fair, fair enough. Um, interestingly enough, Nottingham Forest, this in the last couple of minutes, will face another point seduction um, from next season, unless they sell off a star player by the end of June, they're believed to be around £25 million above the season's limit on losses. Now, I wonder if that's Morgan Gibbs-White. I think that's a sellable asset from uh, Nottingham Forest, and that's a player I would actually be kind of interested in. I like Morgan Gibbs-White. Gibbs ball away a lot, to be fair. But he's high intensity, good player. He is English as well, so if, if, if that's not your thing, it is what it is. Um, Partis down there, bigger and richer. Um, Timur Botacon's going to try to get us to 30 likes. 
Uh, Lucky's down there, United, um, being manager, there is pressure. Yeah, there is. There's always pressure with being United manager. Like, I I'm sure about it, but I don't you worry. Anyway, guys, this went a very fun stream tonight. I'm looking forward to hopping on the agenda um, as well at 9 o'clock. So we'll stay on for another three or so minutes. Um, and, and then I'll have to take an hour break before we hop back on, of course. So make sure hit those 30 likes in the next couple of minutes, guys, if we can. Now, on the poll, the poll will be a funny one tonight. I want to know what percentage of you guys are giddy for Gareth. Let's see. 14%. That's actually higher than I thought it was going to be. I thought that could be 0%. Uh, 34% are sickened by Southgate. 14% uh, said they will start a, a personal Jim Radcliffe out movement if that happens. And 39%, the majority, are saying that might be the wrong, uh, the worst possible option. Bourne said, what is this Garnacho to Real Madrid talk? Yeah, look, that seems to be growing at the minute. Um, I think when you look at it, Garnacho came from Atletico. There is links there. He could have played for Spain as well. Um, so, so that that is true. He could have went there, and that potentially could have been an issue. Um, Matara says, "Why are we celebrating the Manu call up to the national team?" I'm not really celebrating. I think it's just an interesting point. I don't even know if he's going to play. To be honest, um, I, I don't know if I want him to play either. Like, um, because th there seems to be a lot of scrutiny and a lot of hate coming as well. Um. From a lot of people online. So like if he does misplace a pass or loses the ball, it's just gonna get blown up anyway. I wouldn't mind about it. Steph wouldn't want um Steph get his the pizza delivery guy. No, I, I'm not I'm not either. Like um like I, I wouldn't be it, it's one of those, it's like if he was playing twenty ones and running it, yeah, I wouldn't mind it. He's always gonna play for England at some point. Um so, so that that will happen, I guess. Um but I don't know, he, he mightn't even kick a ball anyway. We don't know. Um, Bart says Manu should rest at home, not go to the Euros. Otherwise, he'll be knackered. Southgate will pick. Um, we'll pick him bench him and start Henderson and Calvin over him. Yeah, the, he probably will. He'll probably start Henderson and uh, Calvin Phillips at the at the Euros. Don't you worry. Uh, Sniper's patch. Uh, will Ten Hag survive? I personally think he will be given more time to build a team. We have to take into account the injuries we've had this season. Ten Hag in. Good. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one of those. It's like. <laughs> There's an argument to be made that the style of football and Ten Hag's management is causing some of the injuries because we've had a freakish amount of uh, muscular injuries that come from overtraining and overplaying. But there's also an argument that it has been a lot of unluckiness as well. You know, I think I think it's a damning indication of the medical department that not one but two players in Martinez and Malasia had surgery and then had to go and get a second surgery done because it wasn't done right in the first place. So, so, yeah, I think we've been hampered by injuries. Make no mistake about it. I think we could have managed it better. I am I was worried at the weekend with Hoyland playing because we seen Luke Shaw just a few weeks ago against uh, Luton Town be put back in a little bit early and pull up. But thankfully, Hoyland got through it. Hopefully, that's going to be all good. So, yeah, I mean, we, we should have more players back before um, the next match against Brentford. You know, we have Mount back now, which is good. It's good to see him back. Casemiro might come back fairly soon. And Martinez said to come back after internationals. I would imagine Luke Shaw pops up at some point as well um, for the end of the season. I have comments. Um, <clears throat> let me see. I've got I've got a big question here um, from Matata. Chai or coffee? I, I'm a co I'm a coffee guy, buddy. I'm a coffee guy. Oh, I'm always I'm always gonna go coffee. I mean, I'm fairly bland with coffee as well. Like I'm not really. I mean, I'll drink like a, like a vanilla caramel latte thing, but like. I'm more like just like a flat white or an Americano or filter coffee or something like that, to be honest. But yeah, I mean, gotta be coffee. Gotta be coffee. Um, let me see. Rajat says, give myself a black chai or pl um, plain chai fair. Uh, Liman, I want a manager um, who wants to level up. Yeah, I mean, you want to see that there as well. I mean, you, you, don't want, you don't want the manager to want to improve as he goes along as well. I know there'll always be a learning curve at these big clubs. Um, but... I think that's maybe one concern of Alco Ten Hag is that a lot of it does seem to be experimental and he's trying to find, you know, his 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 best way um as as he's going along. Guys, as Stephanie says, big ups for 30 likes. Much appreciated. I can see we're up to 31 now as well. That's unbelievable, guys. Um what's that? 31 likes from 215 views. So yeah, like, I mean that's really good. Um obviously we're still gonna fight the cause about this YouTube quote unquote shadow ban. It it, it does seem to be a thing. Like, 
I'm not I'm not the world's greatest mathematician, but I do know that um what's this two point two hundred and fifteen uh two hundred and fifteen is what let me just quickly load this up. I don't know why it's not look yeah, so we got we got uh two thousand impressions on today's stream, two hundred and sixteen uh, views so that would be about 10 percent of people who've seen the stream clicked on the stream but youtube's counting it as five percent and that obviously feeds back into it uh but but it's all it is what it is there's nothing we can do about it if you guys just keep hitting the like button as well hit the sub button if you guys are new that really does help anyway and yeah look hopefully we can go on a big run here and hit some big goals this as uh, this year it's been a fairly slow start to the year on youtube but i'm hoping maybe we can get three thousand by the end of the year i think that's a fairly reasonable one anyway uh that go for it look guys i am going to drop off this stream now so thanks so much for sticking with me across this hour been a really good stream and we will be live again tomorrow uh make sure to tune in at 9 p.m i will hopefully be on the united agenda just need to confirm if those guys are going live tonight i think they are but i just can't see anything um up on their youtube at this moment in time let me just double check nah doesn't look to be anything on there uh so look guys thanks so much for watching We'll catch everyone later on as well. Uh, much appreciated. Have a good uh, Wednesday night. Have a good Thursday as well. And I'll see everybody in the next one.